A Robbinsdale man will be sentenced next month after a jury convicted him of running over and killing an ex-girlfriend with a vehicle. Jordan Jefferson was found guilty of second-degree murder in the death of 28-year-old Ochia Brown. He was also convicted of two counts of felony domestic assault for assaulting not only Brown, but another woman he was having a relationship with. Police found a crash vehicle in a Minneapolis street with the woman dead in the back seat. And according to the criminal complaint, Jefferson intentionally struck Brown on the sidewalk and continued to drag her under the vehicle until he struck a front porch. Another woman came to pick up Jefferson. The complaint says the Robinsdale man punched her as well for not driving fast enough away from the scene. Jefferson will be sentenced March 3rd. Another step toward preventing domestic violence is underway in Maple Grove. Restaurants and businesses in Maple Grove are joining forces in a pledge to fight against domestic violence in memory of a Maple Grove woman who died last year. The nonprofit Maria's Voice is now launching a pledge network. The pledge encourages people to learn the signs of domestic violence and speak up when they see something. Spa Via Day Spa in Maple Grove is the first business that will take the pledge in a special event next week. Wahlburgers is also hosting a fundraiser for Maria's Voice next week. You can learn more about taking the pledge on the website mariasvoice.org. Another 22,000 Minnesotans received at least their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine on Friday. And that means about 9% of the state's population has gotten at least one of the recommended two shots. This week marks a significant milestone for nearly 1,000 first responders in western Hennepin County who are getting their second dose of the vaccine. It feels good, but at the end of the day, um, we're still very early in the process. I'm hoping over the next couple of months uh, this will be become more available to folks just walking across the street here and all these kids too going in and out of the school. So uh, I feel lucky and fortunate, uh, but at the same time, uh, my life probably won't change that much. Greg Peterson of the Dayton Fire Department was one of hundreds to receive the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine at Wyzetta High School this week. Roughly 70% of first responders from 43 different police and fire departments in the area received their second shot of the Moderna vaccine at this site over the past two weeks, courtesy of Hennepin County Public Health. The vaccine is a big first step forward for departments looking to resume normal activities and services that allow for more face-to-face -face interaction. Yet, unlike the first dose, this booster shot packs more of a punch. Me personally, about 14 hours after receiving my second dose, I experienced um, some chills, so a, a slight fever, um, and a bit of a headache and some, some muscle aches. Uh, as quickly as it came on, uh, it just disappeared, um, you know, six to eight hours later, and I was still able to go to work the next day and was symptom free. And and as of information released Friday afternoon, about 500,000 Minnesotans had received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Of those, just over 25% had received both doses. The show must go on even during a pandemic. In today's weekend showcase, Neil Pursley shows us how one theater company is continuing their creativity even without live audiences. What do you do to survive if you're a theater company that's not producing live shows in front of an audience anymore? You learn to think out of the box. We are taking our out of the box into the winter spring because we have so many great offerings for families and what we're hearing is that they want to engage more with their young people. Stages Theater's Out of the Box programs began last summer in an effort to connect with their audiences while the theater itself remained closed for performances. Baird says that one of the hallmarks of Stages Theater Company is getting children and parents participating in shared experiences together. And so what we have done with our out of the box offerings is we have created and curated work that they can do together. There are new shows coming out all the way through April and everything you'll need literally comes in a box, which can be mailed or delivered right to your car via drive through drop off service. First up and available right now is the dot. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Our out-of-the-box dot experience includes watercolor, paints. They can create their own art and send it to Stages Theatre Company and we will create a visual gallery on our set 
from the dot that features their work. Barrett says that these out-of-the-box experiences can be enjoyed by parents with their children anywhere they have an internet connection. What we found with our holiday production, we shipped to over 27 states and we had people who wanted to gift that. Uh, and so we've had a number of them ask, can I do your upcoming productions out of the box and ship that uh, to my home as well? For Weekend Showcase from Stages Theater in Hopkins, Neil Persley, CCX News. Valentine's Day is fast approaching and a local flower distributor based in Plymouth is gearing up for the big rush. We are knee deep in roses and rose petals and <laughs> gypsophilia. We're all excited because it's Valentine's Day and it's the time to give flowers, especially roses, very popular. And we are, we've got roses coming in and going out constantly. It's just a nonstop at this, this point. Lynnbush Roses in Plymouth provides flowers to supermarkets and small retail shops all throughout the five state region. They are in the middle of their busiest time of year, which involves taking in flowers from other parts of the world, arranging bouquets for their clients, and shipping them out to stores in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and the Dakotas. While the COVID-19 pandemic has created some supply chain issues, it hasn't slowed down their output. In fact, sales at Lindbush Roses are through the roof this year. This year, what we're seeing with COVID is that people are staying in. They're practicing more safety regulations and uh, the restaurants are only able to be at 50% if that. So, they, so people are choosing to actually stay more remote in home, to cook at home, do more fun things at home, and they want flowers. The Maple Grove boys hockey team has a very experienced and talented group and now they're number one in the state class AA rankings. They face their toughest test so far this season Thursday. Jason Melillo has the highlights. In boys hockey, the top ranked Crimson hosting 10th ranked Andover. Scoreless in the second, Jacob Hicks's shot from the point is deflected home by Chris Kernan, 1-0 Crimson. Garrett Schiffsky snaps the shot for a power play goal and the Huskies level the score at one. Grove answers with its own power play marker as Sam Jacobs bangs in the rebound. It's two to one. Third period, Kyle Kukinen leads the rush and lays it off for Kernan, and the quick shot is in for a 3-1 MG lead. Jacobs breaks in and buries the wrist shot for his second goal and a 4-1 Grove lead. Kukinen gets his fourth assist on that goal. Jack Wenicke stops 27 of 28 shots, and the Crimson wins five to one. They're at Blaine on Saturday night. Jason Melillo, CCX Sports. Maple Grove faces rival Osseo on Tuesday night at the Maple Grove Community Center. After an 0-2 start to the season, the Wysetta boys hockey team was skating for their fourth straight win Thursday night. Wysetta boys hockey at home to face off with Buffalo in a late conference matchup. The Trojans get on the board quickly. Jake Schneider carries the puck into the Buffalo zone and from a tough angle beats the Bison goalie. It's 1-0 Wysetta, 145 into the game. Later in the first period, the Trojans' John Matson passes out front. The first shot is stopped, but Gavin O'Connell is there to knock home the rebound. His third goal of the season makes it 2-0. It's 3-0, Wyzetta after one. Second period, and off a Trojans turnover. Buffalo's Turner Marr scores off his own rebound. The Bison pull within 3-1. Well, less than a minute later, Wyzetta answers. Matt's in the shot, and Jake Keller scores in the rebound. The Trojans are in front by three goals again at 4-1. to one. Still in the second, with the Trojans on the power play. O'Connell passes down low to Keller, who roofs the shot in for another goal. Poisetta is up 5-1 to one after two. Third period, Matson picks up his third assist of the night, feeding Keller, who completes his hat trick. Poisetta would add one more goal and beats Buffalo 7-1. to one. The Trojans are now 4-2 and two on the season. With some slight alterations, mainly no regular season tournaments, the high school wrestling season is progressing. Jay Wilcox has highlights from a match featuring two of the area's best teams. It's senior night at Osseo as the Orioles wrestling team hosts Andover and Wyzetta in a tri-meet. Highlights from Osseo Wyzetta. At 126 pounds, Wyzetta's Andrew Larson tips Connor Spanier to his back for near fall points on the way to a technical fall. It's all Trojans early, they lead 22 to nothing. Next match at 132 and a similar tale. 
Lewis Scott of YZ gets the takedown on Peter Holling's head. Scott controls the match and earns five team points with another tech fall for a 27 to nothing team lead. John Lundstrom of Osseo puts up a good battle against fourth ranked Kyler Wong at 138 pounds, but Wong gets around for the takedown and wins nine to two. Osseo gets on the board at 145. Sixth ranked Dylan Schultz locks Isaiah Schmitz up and gets the pin. Schultz is back in form after a knee injury, but his Orioles trail at 30 to six at this point. Fourth rank Wyzetta is a little too much for Osseo. Adam Eldemir gets the pin at 170 pounds as the Trojans win at 60 to 18. They also thumped Andover. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Thanks Jay. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.